I have to say that our next guest is my colleague in the Urban Chamber of Commerce, IT Roundtable. He's a colleague. He's made major strides. In fact, like I said about our last guest, in this instance, I think he is the only African-American that I know in that space of cybersecurity. I call him Mr. Cybersecurity. I know he's traveled with the last governor all the way overseas to another country. I want to say, I want to say, I don't want to mess up with that one. That's Australia, somewhere way over the waters. I want to say Australia, not if I'm correct. Yes or no, I know you're in the background, but he has traveled the globe and uh, Really, I call him Mr. Cybersecurity. So if you all can go ahead and read his bio, we're going to welcome uh, him. And I have to say, we're both part of the FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation, Citizen Academy. And I'm so excited. Uh, we're going through this journey together and uh, soon to be alumni in three weeks. So uh, who would like to read his bio from our students? None other than Reggie Richardson. And then the next voice you will hear will be that of Reggie. Any of our students? i uh, tell you a little bit about Reggie. I'm gonna speak a little bit about who, what he represents. Sapphire BLU is a leading cybersecurity compliance provider. Recently, they achieved the Registered Cybersecurity mature, uh, <clears throat> Maturity Model Certification or CMMC, Third Party Assessment Organization, the C3PAO, and Registered Practitioner Status as recognized by the DOD CMMC accreditation body. Sapphire BLU offers DOD organizations the mentorship and support to achieve cybersecurity compliance and CMMC certifications. Included in their repertoire of support services, Sapphire BLU offers scoping, gap analysis, pre-assessments, remediation, and documentation services, all in the spirit of helping co companies identify and mitigate cybersecurity risks. so much thank you miel that was awesome and now we're gonna welcome none other than reggie to the virtual stage Woo! Reggie, welcome hello everybody welcome hey reggie how you doing i'm doing well i'm doing well thank you god for having me on uh, it's an honor first of all to speak with you young guys uh thank you for their, 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 their warm welcome um uh, what i wanted to talk to you guys about today is is careers in cybersecurity. Um, as you as you read, uh, the uh, CMMC is a brand new industry. Uh, I mean, it really hasn't really taken off from top of, probably until about June, but it's going to create uh, uh, opportunities for jobs for professional assessors, uh, uh, companies, and and uh, and registered practitioners who can go out and certify companies. And it won't be restricted to just the DOD. It's expanding as we speak to international markets and other markets. So just want to put that out there. But that being said, uh, I want to talk about cybersecurity careers because I don't see enough African-Americans in this particular area. And I really want to be the person to really push this from my standpoint. So what I want to do is share information. And a lot of times the information is not getting out there. So I want to share the information uh, with everybody and to show you exactly, first of all, what is a cybersecurity career? And then where, where do I go to look for this information to help shape my career so I can go after it? Um, it can either be a companion with your former education, college education, or it could be a parallel path to that. Uh, but they both get in the same direction where we, we're getting jobs that are in demand. You know, we're in the middle of COVID right now. And with COVID, you know, there's a lot of losses of jobs. But there's no shortage of cybersecurity experts. It's a, it, it, I mean, I'm sorry, there is a shortage. And so these people are always finding jobs. So what I want to do with you guys is I want to share a video with you that talks about cybersecurity jobs, what they are, why, why they're needed, and some of the career paths. We're going to stop that. And then I'm going to show you a resource where you can go out on your own and look at what career path you want to take. So with that being said, let me pull this up for you guys. Um, make this bigger. 
Thank you, Reggie. And while you're doing that, I see some more students and we're going to shout them out. I see PJ Jern, uh, Barney, they're congratulating. They see Brindley Middle School in the house and uh, oh, they're congratulating the last winner. They're awesome. Shout out to Misa Hurd. Booker Elementary School, Cheyenne have been wonderful. They've been with us, I think, all day today. We've been at this since 1130 <laughs> this morning today. I see Ingrid joining us all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. Sawyer Middle School in the house. Desiree Robinson, shout out to you. And uh, I'm just multitasking, Reggie, while you're pulling that up. I'll be able to see it in the background uh, as soon as you hit share. And we will move to the end. And I'm just kind of multitasking here. I see Felice McKinney. All right, I'm going to pass it over to Miel. My background's a little loud here, so I'm going to pass it over to Miel for a moment. All good. Uh, at this point in the program, I guess uh, it would be fitting to share a little bit about my feeling about uh, African-American involvement with technology. I think uh, it's really interesting how a lot of our history, unfortunately, is not uh, revealed in schools and things like that. It's, it's very unfortunate because, you know, African-American did develop the dot-com phenomenon and African-American did, you know, help to develop the street lights and, you know, plenty of other things uh, that African-Americans helped to do. Uh, Cam, I would like to ask you if there's any interesting facts you've learned throughout your years. I know that you're a college student. If you have anything you could share, like something you didn't know that an African American created, and you were like, "Wow, that's really cool." Here, sorry. Right. Um, you know, obviously the uh, the dot com phenomenon was really cool to find out about last year when we were in the tech summit. That was the first time I had heard about that. That was amazing to hear about. Um, another one was interesting about the. I'm trying to trying to remember the person's name. We went to it was an architecture, hip hop in architecture. We went this past Wednesday. We had the opportunity to be on a webinar with it, and it was super interesting to see some of the the fantastic people that he showed, and how hip hop became a thing. The music genre of hip hop, um, and then how hip hop can be translated into architecture and some of the work he had he had done and just how he started creating this technology that turned lyrics into cityscapes basically and how rhyming stuff would turn into like buildings and structures and it was super fascinating to watch and like just hear about this passion project that he had the name escapes me right now um do you do you do you by any chance remember the the presenter Unfortunately, it escapes the my mind. The right presenter from where? Uh, last this this past Wednesday, uh, the architecture. Oh yeah, system. Mel Green, and then the other gentleman that he had from Hip Hop Architecture, but Mel yes. Green was the host of that for the Architects Institute of America. Yeah, AIA. The the Hip Hop Architecture that it was super cool, and you guys should totally check that out in your free time. It was super cool to just see how he's like melding hip hop and rap with architecture. Awesome. Yeah, it was great. But Melvin Green, and it's, uh, I believe the website is Hip Hop Architect. I'm sure that's what it is. Did a phenomenal. Yeah. It's all about how hip hop came about with architecture. <laughs> awesome. All right. Ready? We uh, ready? We good? Let's see here. Yep. I see the screen here. Looks like we are ready. Hey, take it away, Reggie. It is all yours. <laughs> There's more advanced technology in your phone than it took to get America to the moon. The apps and games of today were the subject of science fiction just 30 years ago. But with technology changing so fast, it can be hard to know what's going to happen next or where the next step is. As someone raised with advanced modern technology, you have experienced that experts a few decades ago would never have imagined. And you're going to have opportunities to turn that experience into a profitable career. This presentation is a quick introduction to the growing field of cybersecurity and how to get started on the path to a cybersecurity job. Cybersecurity is usually defined as the use of techniques or skills to protect data, networks, and systems from attack. Everyone knows someone who's been hacked, or has had their identity stolen, or even just lost control of their Facebook for a few hours. And there's always bigger attacks in the news, 
Data breaches at major companies means that millions of people can have their data stolen and sold on the black market. Hackers can use this data to make money, find more data to sell, or even ruin their victims' lives just for the fun of it. That's where cybersecurity comes in. Cybersecurity experts are the ones who are able to fight cyber criminals on their own turf, stopping them from accessing important information and keeping people safe. There is currently a cybersecurity skills shortage in the United States. There simply aren't enough people to fill all of the available jobs, and the problem keeps getting bigger. See, hackers don't have to be smart. The internet is full of tutorials about how to use pre-made scripts and attacks to wreck someone else's day. Most hackers don't know a lot about computers and don't take time for special training or study. They just grab that pre-made script and go cause a mess. That means there's millions of low-level hackers out there. Cybersecurity experts, on the other hand, are fewer but more valuable. They've taken the time to study a problem and know how to use their talents. That means cybersecurity experts can be harder to find, and they're desperately needed. Think of it this way. Even if an enemy hacker is only level 1, 50 enemies can still overrun a fortress. You need at least one level 50 cybersecurity expert to beat them all. Here are a few of the many kinds of jobs that you might see in the cybersecurity field. Graphic designer. Michelle is an artist. She works for a cybersecurity firm designing posters and creating eye-catching images to teach people about security. Social engineering trainer. Lee is an actor. He understands how to portray emotion and tell a convincing story. So he teaches other people how to tell when someone is lying or trying to scam them. Network security admin. Joe likes puzzles and problem solving. She's good at spotting when something doesn't fit a pattern. So she monitors the computer networks and is the first to see when a hacker is trying to break in. Social media consultant. Hendrick was on Tumblr before anyone else. He always knows what's trending before it even trends and has seen all the scam emails and messages that get sent around. He works as a consultant, explaining the possible dangers of social media to people who don't know much about it. Ethical Hacker Adam used to want to be a hacker. Instead, he joined up with a security firm and became an ethical hacker, which lets him do the same thing legally. Adam's job is to play the role of cyber criminal, testing targeted systems and seeing if he can break into them. If you think cybersecurity sounds like a good fit for you, then great. You're in for a wild ride with a lot of challenges and opportunities. Here's a few things you can do to start preparing for a career in cybersecurity. Take courses online. There are a lot of online training programs like Coursera. Remember though that many programs are scams and don't offer real certifications. So always research the course and double check with your parents to be sure you're getting a real program. Practice, practice, practice. Play with code and talk to other people who are interested in computers and security. Find a mentor. Ask your teacher or a family member who knows about cybersecurity if they'll mentor you. See if you can arrange a visit to a local technology company and ask about what kind of attacks they have to deal with. You'll hear some good stories. Join a camp. Many organizations offer tech boot camps to teach you the basics of security, programming, and even ethical hacking. Participate in competitions. Challenges such as the Global Cyber Olympics will give you a chance to test your skills against other people of varying skill levels, and prizes include free courses, streaming video, and cash. This skills gap means that you have a very valuable opportunity. Chances are you've grown up with a PC, a smartphone, a tablet, or all three. If you're 18, you could have 12 years of experience using a computer, and that means you already know things that older generations have had to be trained on. And let's be honest, the money can be pretty good too. The one thing that most intimidates people about cybersecurity or any computer job is the idea that you need to know how to program a computer. While understanding and writing code can be very valuable skills, a lot of employers would prefer someone who's smart and willing to learn over someone who can do code and nothing else. Often, the answer is yes. A bachelor's degree in computer science, for example, can be very helpful in understanding cybersecurity. 
However, if you don't want to go to college, you can still learn a lot of things on your own that will make it easier to break into cybersecurity. Thanks to the internet, you have an incredible amount of information at your fingertips. Today, we went over the basics of cybersecurity and cybersecurity careers. We reviewed what cybersecurity is and why it's a growing industry, as well as a few of the jobs that are open for different skill sets. Finally, we went over what you can do to be a part of the cybersecurity field. Thanks for taking the time for our presentation. Okay, um, where am I at? I'm trying to find my way back to where, okay, here we go. Oh, no worries. Yeah, so I got to, uh, first of all, what did you guys think about that? Uh, I thought that was really useful. I had great tools about like how to get started and, and just the different positions in uh, cyber security. Like I didn't even think about the, the social media, like being able to like scour social media and find the everything as like an actual useful cyber. I'm always thinking about, you know, like pen testing and, and like being the ethical hacker, but you know, there's so much more to it because you do have to get it out to a wider audience and be the one to find the stuff when it's getting uh, traction. Um, I think what's really interesting today, at least like about like hacking, hacking has since I guess changed its word. There's so much hacking that's, there's so much more hacking today that's available. And a lot of people might not even understand that that is considered hacking. Funny enough, I while we were uh, like, uh, while we were doing the program, some kid like hacked into his like teacher's email account and he was like using her <laughs> thing like in, in the chat and like, you know, getting someone's password and logging into their device and pretending to be them. That's a form of hacking. So just the fact that, you know, uh, this industry is expanding to attack different type of hackers is, is really exciting to me because there's more to it than just, you know, being in the movie and just, you know, kind of pressing a bunch of keys and stopping the missile from going off or whatever. So it's really cool. Yeah, and that, and that's that's true. Uh, and one of the most uh, effective hacking is social social engineering, and not not ever being on a computer. And so right. these are things that we teach. So uh, let me do this. Let me share another tool with you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with Duana the links for both this video and this next uh, link that I have, and you guys can look at it at your own time. But I want to share one more with you, uh, if you don't mind. And this one is from the National Initiative for Cybersecurity uh, and Careers and Studies. Now, what this is, is, uh, or NICE, what this is, is a app and it's very intuitive. So it looks at the cyber workforce and what areas you can go into. So it looks at, you know, life cycle management, talent management, strategic management. It depends on what you think you want to go to in a career and how it ties into cybersecurity. It, it, it breaks down all of these, anything from a data analyst, IT, uh, uh, research and development, you name it. And this is a very, very powerful tool to help guide you guys on your pathway to a job. And it's, it's pretty simple to use. You can either use the drop down menu or you can hover over something. So for example, if I go over IT, this program will says, okay, here are the career paths here. And say you wanted to be a, let's go with software development, because I know Jordan was talking about that. What it does is it further breaks it down into detail, software development. Then it talks about all the tasks they're associated with doing this. It talks about the knowledge, skills, and abilities that are required. It talks about uh, capability indicators, and it, it goes to great detail on what you, you need to look for for uh, uh, a cybersecurity security career. And you can go up and down here, and this really helps you shape your decisions in terms of selecting, okay, I like this, and um, I want to go after this. And it also has a pathway. So here's a PDF. I'm not going to open it up, but here's a PDF of it. So you can study. Sit down with your parents. And says, what are we doing? You know, this is what I want to do. I want to go to college, but I want to have a focus on cybersecurity, or I may not be able to go to college. And it's, that, that's the reality we all have to live with. But in cybersecurity, uh, you can you can gain uh, these some of these skills uh, and go get a job. And there's a shortage of them. 
So I just wanted to share this with you guys really quick. Um, and so you can see how that works. So with that said, um, any questions? I know a lot of people act about hacking. Uh, I get involved with a lot of the different hacks and methodologies. Uh, I think the one with the Treasury Department, there are tools out there, but uh, uh, actually, I can say this. I actually reached out to the, the Treasury Department about a year and a half ago, um, responding to their request for information about how to protect that system. We responded. We didn't get a reply back. A year later, they got hacked. Um, it, it is what it is, but uh, we've seen some things when they got hacked. Uh, one of the things was was weak passwords. Uh, one of the things was, was was something called spear phishing, where they go after you know you know the big guys and they just make mistakes. You know, doctors, lawyers, and bosses we are the worst at cybersecurity, um, and so uh, they go after those type things. And, and get in. It wasn't, to me, it wasn't really that sophisticated. It was just apathy. One of the number one, one of the number one enemies of cybersecurity is apathy. It's the number one. Uh, we can talk about it, but it's apathy. So we see those type of things. So, uh, but it, the job's not going anywhere. Uh, the work we're doing with the CMMC is going to grow. Uh, I think it's going to go international. Uh, it's going to go across all federal governments, and we're all going to be compliant to it. So just remember what I said that when you see it, John Lace, said, yeah, he said this five years ago. I said, yeah, it's coming. So with that said, any, any questions for me? I don't want to take up too much time. Um, I had a question about, like, fishing and, and spear fishing as well. Um, like, that is that is a very difficult thing to defend against because it is human error and everything. Um, and there are pretty good like infographics for like emails and stuff for like how to discern those but like for like calls and stuff like what are some tips for those for and what? like interacting with people you talking about when you say call you're talking about uh telephone calls or yeah something like that yeah where you're like interacting with a real human uh so i i get the calls all the time um yeah as you can tell i'm probably a, a big target because Right. we get picked on and 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 so it, it it comes down to something simple i need to know if somebody's calling you you know i would ask you some questions about your company okay why i mean why do you need to know if you can always remember the term need to know if they don't have a need to know don't share it with them i like that yeah it's it's, it's really simple if you keep it simple if you don't have a need to know don't share it um, I can throw another question out about, um, like, what do you think is, like, a technology sector that uh, kind of lacks proper cybersecurity? Oh, geez. Uh, we, um, I, I, I would hate to say it, but I think they, they, all, they all do. They're all making strides. Like, uh, one of the, the first ones to make a lot of standardizations is the credit card company. Uh, they came out and made standards out there because people were ripping off money, and that that is a direct has a direct effect on your bottom line when somebody's stealing your money. And so that was one of the first ones that came up uh, with what they call PCI compliance, where companies had to have some level of cybersecurity, and that happened. Oh, geez, it happened six seven years ago where everyone was mandated to have PCI compliance. Now, right now, uh, the, the Department of Defense is just now getting started with this, and which is ironic because in, in my military career when I was in the Air Force, we did a exercise where we tested this in 1997, and we knew we were going to go in. And it was the first ever, as a matter of fact, it was, we called it, the birthplace of cybersecurity. We did the first. Uh, we did the first uh, penetration test on the defense network, and we found out what the effects were. And it's no longer classified, but it's it's called eligible C ninety ninety seven. Look it up. And it's actually a video, a heavily redacted video, <laughs> but it's the video to show what happened then. So we knew back then 
cybersecurity was a problem. But it took all the way to 2020 before we actually did something about it. So I think it's across all industries to go back to what you're saying. Uh, it's apathy. It's a lot of companies will not go after because it costs a lot of money. And typically they are reactive. So you get hacked, then it's just, oh, when you get ransomware and you can't do your job, then it's an issue. Uh, industries that get picked on a lot, uh, here's an example, construction companies. But why construction companies? Why does that make sense? When construction companies are doing work, they use, usually do large transactions. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, $100,000 transactions. And if you are were to give them uh, get them ransomware and tie it up all their business, they can't do those transactions. They have schedules to meet, timelines, and it's a, it's a big hit. So they would rather pay the ransom, get their data back, and keep going, versus wait and say I'm not going to pay it. So they're they're big targets uh, for ransomware and cybersecurity and threats like that. So that, that's a really big area right there. More questions? Uh, I don't believe so, but definitely shout out to PJ Barney in the chat. He was uh, going off actually about uh, his interest in cybersecurity. So it's really cool that somebody out there, uh, they're definitely tuned in. That's that's great. It's good to see. Yeah, I remember uh, I went to Gen Cyber as well. I think I did it in 2018. I was the first year that they did that. And uh, I think I, I, I did make an appearance the next year. They invited us on for like um, coming in uh, to like keep like growing a, a group photo and everything. And it was a shame that we couldn't have done it this past year. But I do remember Gen Cyber and that was a super interesting thing with the cybersecurity and all. So if that does occur once uh, COVID allows it, um, that is definitely something I would recommend people go to. Absolutely. Hackathons are big. And, and oh, obviously, yeah. um, there's one called a Cyber Patriot. Uh, that's one that's free. We also have some other organizations. There's a lot of free organizations out there. And if you guys are interested, just get a hold of uh, Tech Queen, and I will wrestle, you know, compile all the resources that I know of that are free that you can you can access to do this stuff. So just just let me know. Just reach out to her and I will give you everything that I have and make and empower you guys with some knowledge to go forward. 